All right, and we are live. Hello, everyone. Pleasure to have you here for our very first Modeler Monday. Um, so glad to have you here today. Um, welcome to our Modeler Mondays. Modeler Mondays is the first um, live stream series that we really want to do around Adobe Substance 3D Modeler. And this is the very first episode in the series of the stream that will be happening every other Monday unless we schedule otherwise at 1 p.m. EST. So Modeler Monday really uh, intends to provide tips, tricks, and tutorials and an insight into like professionals and artists' unique workflows when creating in both VR and desktop in Adobe Substance 3D Modeler. And so I would like to introduce you to um, our host. And so first we have Anton. Anton, do you want to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm Anton. I work on Modeler. I help design the, the UI bits. So yeah, <laughs> that's mostly what I do. And then also chat on Discord a lot. Cool, good stuff. And we also have Gio. Gio, give us a little bit of an intro. Hi, uh, I'm Gio. I'm a uh, creative director here at Adobe. And um, I also work closely with uh, the Modeler team. Uh, kind of thinking of myself as sort of uh, the outside team person who's not really integrated within the team, but I work closely with, with uh, the, uh, the group, especially Anton over here. So. Cool, thanks. I'm so happy to have you on today, Gio. And for people who don't know me, hi, my name is Val. Um, you'll know me on the Discord community as Foxer 3D or FoxXR. Um, at any point in time that you have any questions, comments, um, I'm your girl. So that is us. This is the team today. Uh, we're really excited to bring you like a welcome to MD. Uh, we really want to show you some cool stuff uh, that Gio has prepared. And that's really an insight into the hybrid workflow. We'll talk about like desktop versus VR, how to work in between it and how we do it Geo style. Um, and we also want to go through some quick release notes. And so we have the two-handed spline, the muscle buildup tool, other bug fixes if you guys are following along with the modeler stuff, but we'll, we'll jump right into that. Um, so yeah, Gio, if you want to take it away. All right. Screen share. Uh, screen share. Uh, screen share my screen. Truth. How you doing? <laughs> there we go. Share. Can y'all see this? That looks good. All right. I'm going to go jump right into VR. Always that awkward moment of uh, putting on my headset here. Um, all righty. Uh, Could you move your mouse cursor too, Gio? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sweet. How's that? Perfect. Cool. All righty. So okay. I figured for this uh, first ever demo, um, rather than focusing on the intricacies of what each tool does, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and pretty much show my workflow of how I use Modeler as a as a as an app to to conceptualize and, and build forms on top of it and anton and val can you know talk more about the uh the intricacies of it if there are any questions or if y'all have any questions as i'm working please uh feel free to ask so i'm just gonna go right on to it just since uh, we don't really have much time uh to do something um fully fleshed out here so i'm gonna try my best to uh to um, come up with something hopefully cool, you know? Uh, I have this um, creature in mind that I wanted to do for this presentation. I have it kind of fully sketched out, but, you know, I figured I'll just have fun with it and see how it forms as I'm doing this demo live. Uh, you know, it could mutate from what I had in mind before to something else. And that's usually the fun of uh, building things in any 3D package, but most especially I find in Modeler, where uh, speed uh, for me has been an important aspect of um, of how I work, right? And and Modeler has been able to accommodate me in terms of capturing the ideas that I have in my head onto what you see on the screen in such a quick amount of time. So, um, so right now I'm just pretty much um, working on layers, just blocking in um, some semblance of of, uh, of a bust, right? So we're just going to have sort of like a, a bust right now. And I'm going to select all those layers and merge it. 
and smoothen it out a little. So that, this is going to be the basis for what I'm going to be building on top of it. So just as a guide for us. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And I'll just be focusing right now on primary forms, essentially. And Modeler is pretty uh, great for, for this type of uh, work when you're just dealing with big shapes. And please, uh, I don't want to be the only one talking. <laughs> and time <laughs> <fell>. <laughs> Like, okay. no, we just want to give you room to say what you got to say. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think uh, that's one of the advantages of the um, 3D input as well, is that because if you want, when you want to lay down like big chunks of clay like this, it's a lot faster than um, moving it around with with gizmo and stuff. So it gives you this nice freeform way uh, to block stuff out when you don't need you know exact level precision. Obviously, if you want to do machinery and that kind of thing, then um, gizmo and precise input really help, but when you're just trying to get a vibe going, um, it feels really nice to be able to just bash it together and try different things. Um, do you want to give us a hint of what you'll be making, Geo? Or should yeah, we so secret? I'm thinking sort of like a squid uh, type of a creature, uh, sort of what you would see in like Star Trek or the Star Wars Cantina. Uh, you know, just sort of a fun um, creature that that sort of like harkens back to the old uh, mask, uh, you know, practical effects, FX mask days. Um, so I'm just trying to find like a good uh, relationship of shapes right now that, um, you know, I had a sketch done, um, but since I don't have it with me right now, I'm kind of like trying to riff off of uh, the idea. Um, so, so really just, um, as you can see, I'm just sticking with one uh, one primitive right now, essentially. So I'm just kind of non-destructively playing with forms right now. So I'm kind of just like taking the cranium here, um, selecting selecting this layer for the uh, sort of the cheekbone, maybe blending that in. The mouth here is looking to be interesting. So we're kind of a, <laughs> we're fortunately or unfortunately for y'all, we're in this exploration together in trying <laughs> to uh, figure out uh, what this thing looks like, um, which I think is always the fun of things. So that's I'm thinking the mouth would be sort of this uh, this vertical looking mouth here. Uh, yeah. Okay, so already I think uh, we're we're getting some something I'm I'm kind of happy with. It's pretty cool that you can do it all with just an egg as well. Like, that's yeah, like that's such a versatile frame to, to do. Oh, I love, I love the egg. I love the egg. Yeah, it's it's uh, neat. In in medium, obviously, you could do the same thing using kind of like spheres and using the warp tool to to move it around. But we've added these parametric primitives so that you can very quickly stretch them as you place them down, and that helps speed up the flow a little bit more as well. So that um, you can kind of get the basic form down immediately, and then you can obviously warp it into place and get the fine adjustments. But you kind of get a good part of the way there with with the original form. And also, it's kind of nice to have that shape uh, in a way, almost like to suggest and give you ideas about the placement of it, so you kind of see it before before you've got it into place. Um, so I think those have been helping a bunch for for the primary form block out. Exactly. It's um. It's one of the best uh, primitives for organic shapes to use as a basis. So what I had done there um, was rather than continuing to duplicate the layers or create new layers, I should say, since I have pretty much uh, pretty much a lot of the, the forms blocked in for the primaries, I'm just now that I, I'm focusing a little bit more on the, the details of the character, like, you know, there's this ridge um that i want to kind of accent on this thing so what i've been doing is i've been duplicating in place so selecting this layer and then just kind of using that as as to further block in ideas of, of of form and i really love this way of working instead of like building up from one surface with a brush because i'm still dealing with shapes right now right mm -hmm. um, so i'm kind of like Disparate forms, but in my head, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, 
already seeing what this thing will look like. So I'm going to switch modes here. I'm going to get off, get out of symmetry, and I'm going to switch to my uh, favorite uh, primitive from from the two Antons, as I like to uh, say. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, this is uh, the the muscle two handed um, muscle spline. Uh, what, what is the official word? I think it's spline now. Yeah, but we'll call it yeah. affectionately yeah. muscle is is cool, but. Yeah, you can for me, it'll it forever be called a water balloon. <laughs> water balloon <laughs> as a as a as a callback to uh, my my class that I did a long time ago. Uh, water balloon. That was the idea behind it. It was we had um, spline on previous stuff that I worked on, but uh, I sort of tagged Anton K, uh, you know, the, who's the more mathy Anton on the team, and I was like, is there any way you can make it? sort of bulge and bend because Geo's got this water balloon method and it sort of requires the bulging of the spline. And it's hard enough to do a normal spline in SDFs, but he was able to pull out this bulgy spline, which is pretty awesome. I don't think I've seen any other yeah. um, program do it, that. It's uh, the guessing. ultimate ultimate muscle tool in my book. Uh, so I'm just uh, essentially blocking in. I'm thinking it's a cuttlefish. Uh, type of a creature. So I'm blocking in um, the tentacle here with the suckers. So for the suckers, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tweak some of the parametric shapes here. There's a fillet. There's a chamfer. Oh, the chamfer is new, by the way. The chamfer is not actually out. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. I didn't mean to do okay. that. Yeah. yeah. But that's going to come uh, in the next build. So we've got oops, chamfering and um, and controllable fillet on on all the prims. So that's it's pretty cool for hard surface, especially. But it's actually nice for organics too, because you can kind of give these flatter regions to your um, to your pieces without having to like go through and do the, the chamfer like manually, which can be kind of a pain. So I'm going to select this, and well, actually, first let me increase the resolution. And I'm going to turn this into a linked model. So I'm going to copy, just for the sake of uh, time, just kind of do it this way. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the kind of the, the exponential uh, yeah. growth of, uh, of tentacle. <laughs> is, once you have one, oops. Yeah, once you have one, then you make two, then you make four out of two, and then you make eight out of it. It's kind of yeah. interesting that was like the thing that forced us to really crank up the layer count because once you um oh yeah oh i think they lost yeah. anton for a second there yeah it oh, disconnected no. <laughs> that's uh -oh. all right he'll come back he'll come back um that's cool though like so by instancing how do you um like you describe what you're doing in terms of instancing and copying here Yeah, uh, so what I had done pretty much uh, geometry, and uh, I'll reveal later why that uh, the purpose of that. Um, but what I did was um, I grouped it into this main tentacle layer that I'll then do a, um, a mirror repetition. Okay, very cool. Toggle with. So with this, <laughs> it looks like Dr. Zor here. <laughs> um, sorry. With respect to the mirror plane, right? And then, if I, if say I want to start tweaking the, um, let's see, what do we want to do here for the tentacles? So as you can see, it's updating on all of the, uh, you know, just adding some complexities, maybe like. Oh, nice. Oh yeah, you can actually see it like changing so through the different instances, hey? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, do you so find that that like affects your speed? That's, uh, oh, for sure, multiple tentacles, also fingers. I've been using it for a lot of like joints. Like I did this character with a lot of hands, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so it just really, helps with that kind of stuff. So, um, all right. 
So I'm just going to continue on with this one, just adjusting adjusting the uh, the shapes that are already there. Um, at this point, like, honestly, this is um, when I'm in this mode of working, this is this could this for me is the the phase where I really relish. Right. I, I, I devote a lot of just like uh, of my time really thinking and just adjusting the uh, the shapes to come up with the design that I want and and I'm always looking around the uh, the shapes you know when I'm when I'm tweaking especially when you're in this mode I'm always assessing what what all the silhouettes are doing and in, in, in the infinite amounts of silhouettes that this thing would have so okay. you know trying to really get the angles correctly um, so just yeah and do you find that actually like being in vr kind of gives you like a different kind of input that would on desktop oh yeah a hundred percent vr is definitely um allows for exactly for what i was just saying um just the, that ability to uh to assess all the forms and all their various different um views right like uh which is pretty hard to do in, in, in desktop because here I could just zoom in and really, because I'm, I'm a stickler for form. Like I think a lot of people know that about me and I'm always just like in there, I could just be doing this for 10 minutes, just fiddling on this one, one tiny area, making sure that, you know, the acceleration curve is like correct and all that stuff. So VR really is, is that, uh, it, it, it bodes well for that type of workflow. So, Kind of, uh, you know, don't want to noodle too much on the primary forms here, even though, you know, there's still way much more uh, we could do here. But let me just create a split here on that. Uh, and so you're carving through right now? Yeah, I'm just carving through with my uh, the clay brush here. So I kind of want to have this. Um, the slip a little bit more defined. Hello, can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah. ominous voice, Anton. Hello. No, no, no. I don't know. <laughs> He's back. I don't know why the video is not coming through, but I, I'm back on my phone. It's, uh, it looks like Comcast has cut my internet. <laughs> oh, my wow. goodness. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What better time? Always, uh... Maybe it'll come back. We'll see. That's Sorry okay. about that. Okay. No, it's all good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, um, well, let's not merge. I'm going to merge pretty much. Um, so now that I'm, I'm essentially, uh, just to catch you up, Anton, um, just uh, now that the primary forms are roughly, you know, in place, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and um, merge this while yeah, the leaving the tentacles for now. Oh, sorry. What yeah, was I was going to ask about the primary forms because uh, people on Slack have asked me how to how does Geo get his stuff so clean and smooth? So do you, could you have any tips for keeping your primary forms like these nice clean shapes? Yeah, uh, essentially what y'all seen me do here is um, always starting with a primitive, right? Clean primitives. And another tip is my, uh, my the radius of any tool that I use really like from warp to smooth. I always have a pretty big radius just so, you know, as an example, when, when say I'm fi fixing the silhouette here or trying to get a, a specific silhouette with a big radius, I'm able to control it. I always say it's like controlling a Bezier spline, right? You have three points and you're just controlling one to get the desired curvature and you're just kind of moving wherever you want that point to be versus a smaller radius where I'm doing this, it's already introducing, I call it the wobblies and, you know, no wobblies on my neighborhood here. Like <laughs> that is like a big no, no, especially at this point. Like I would not even think about, uh, adding an ounce of detail <clears throat> detail at this point. Cause detail means, uh, you're adding noise. Right. So I always try to keep in the mindset of clean forms for as long as I can. And that used to be a discipline that I had to kind of uh, 
conditioned myself into uh, learning, but the more I did it, the more I've, it's just become my, my main philosophy. And I feel at least it's made me into a better uh, sculptor because of it. Um, so yeah. And then also like just, what else is a, used to have a lot of tips, like kind of keeping your elbows to your uh, shoulders when you're, um, you know, kind of, uh, so that the control is, is, is sort of more limited to your, your upper arm area. Okay, so I'm just essentially blending things in. I might as well blend the tentacles. Like I was going to save them for later, but you know, it's kind of, it's a demo. So it's going to look a little, um, I think it looks great. <laughs> cool. Thank you. I'll so you're merging them. everything together then? Yeah. I'll just merge them. Commit to it. Commit I to probably it. should have saved before, uh, <laughs> <laughs> before committing <laughs> uh, remember to save all yeah auto save is coming y'all by the way <laughs> uh, courtesy of paul he's yeah he's he's heroed that in because, ah, yeah, crap. we don't want uh, people losing work i'll save in desktop because i can't save in, in vr uh, so let's just hope that this doesn't crash <laughs> um you, cross yeah. The more the people watch the stream, the more that you'll start to hear names too for people on the team. <laughs> so that'll actually be kind of cool, I think, just for an insight there. Yeah. 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 There's only a handful of people on the team, <laughs> so you, you learn people pretty quickly. Um, a little bit of feedback. So I'm switching to a more of a detail mode. Uh, so. I'm going to the clay tool with this uh, primitive, the gouge primitive, and putting it into constraint, which I find to be a really good um, sort of, uh, let's actually add steady to it. So it's a, it's a way for me to just start accenting. Oops. I mean, I've got a pretty shaky hand because I drink a lot of coffee. So, you know, it's a way for me to accent the shapes that are already there. Oh, wow. Um, and, and yeah, so it's now kind of like making it a bit more organic, right? Um, maybe even like adding some echoing wrinkles here. Like I love adding this kind of stuff in preparation for desktop where we're, we're going to switch modes later and um, start using uh, some of the more build up tools. But right now I'm just putting in the roadmaps of uh, where where all that work is gonna fall on top of. Right. Someone's asking Gio that if you were to do hard surface work, would you do it in a similar way where you just kind of start with primary forms and then merge them down and then work progressively from there? Absolutely. Uh, it, that, that philosophy of mine carries through with hard surface, with Hacking. <laughs> what are the primary things I need to uh, take care of in life? Okay, I'll do that first. So um, it's 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 pretty much all encompassing for me. Um, like, but yeah, for sure, hard surface uh, um, environments. You know, like because what you're really doing is you're trying to establish readability, right? Like the primary forms that have already established is are the shapes that's that's gonna make you go look at this guy and go, okay, that's, that's the, the creature, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's the Millennium Falcon. What are the primary shapes of the Millennium Falcon? Square, you know, the round body with the, the two mm -hmm. flared up uh, shapes up in the tip. So um, it's essentially just good design to, to think that way, in my opinion. Yeah, it's interesting because it's not just about, um, you know, not spending time on the details it's like it's actually bad if you spend time on the details because like you were saying it's distracting and it adds noise i used to think it's just like well you save the detailing for later kind of thing but it's like no it's it's actually important to, to not deliberately not do it not yeah very into it in my opinion yeah that that is absolutely true like just because i mean that's the lure of cg right your 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 ability to um to put in as much detail as, as you can. Um, so you have that, that, that luxury, but 
the, the true skill, in my opinion, at least, is the restraint to, to, to not put in the, t the details until it's the appropriate time. So, okay, I, I kind of have something creepy here. So I'm going to go and, uh, and switch over to desktop mode. So, you know, my men mentally, right, I'm like, okay, so I have this VR model that I've done where the shapes are roughly working. And now it's time to turn it into a more organic uh, uh, surface. And so, you know, I'm going to mentally switch modes here. And um, sorry, I was awkward. Let's first save this really quick. So we're in desktop mode now, right? Yeah. Uh, yes, so we're in desktop mode. Um, I, so, I feel like uh, it helps also having the 3D input to, to do the big forms, like it's more fun, whereas mm -hmm. you know, you're know you not as tempted to do detail because you have these broad sweeping motions you can do. Um, yeah. Because I think when you have a pen, your natural inclination is to really you know, get into detail like much more so than I think when you're using your hand. Exactly, because there's, you know, the hand, pen to paper is, a, you know, there's a lot more. For me, it's like an itch. Like I just want to put detail here because it's like <laughs> I'm drawing it on. Um, so yeah, exactly. Uh, I think that's a very good um, way of explaining it. When you're in VR, you're just focused on the forms, right? And now I have this uh, tool, the the build up tool that is uh, is it already out? That's out. Yeah, yeah that okay. came out. So this is my favorite tool back in, you know, you know, I mean, I, I still use ZBrush and, and all these other software. So just adding, you know, used to be, I would just use the build up in ZBrush to add the um, sort of the organic way of, of how these forms would, uh, would blend in and out of each other. So as you can see, I'm um, using a small strength uh with this setting and um i'm, I'm in, interchanging to like about like five to uh, you know roughly around 11 so i can also make some some marks that are uh you know that i would normally used to do in um in layer mode right i would just kind of like okay if i have if i want a ridge here it used to be i would do the muscle prim or duplicate this mesh but now with with build up i'm just with these arcs that I'm doing, I'm able to just add that extra layer of complexity to the uh, to the surface. And this one I know is not out yet, but I want to kind of give a preview because it's important for this demo. The the pinch is that okay to uh, pinch crease y'all to mention? Yep. Well, I, anything that isn't currently released is something that is typically or like usually tested by our private users, people like Geo. Yeah. Um, so if you see it and you're like, wow, that's really cool. I want to use it in the future. Um, let us know in the community, actually, and we can see how quickly we can prioritize getting that out to you or whether or not it's something that people even really want to see at all. Yeah. Um, but that's so really I cool, Geo. So I yeah. actually have a question. Uh, mm -hmm. How close do you find this, like working with traditional tools? Like, is there like a creative like flow state that you kind of enter after a while? Like, what? How, how does that feel? Yeah, I mean, for me, um, like working this way, working with modelers, especially in VR mode, it's you know I used to sculpt in clay, not, not professionally by any means, but I used to sculpt a lot when I was at ILM. Uh, with, with Chavant and just that sort of um, state that I lose myself in when I'm in, in clay, working with clay, I should say, is very much uh, in comparison to what I what I find myself in when I'm lost in modeler, where I'm just it's the way in which I'm interacting with the surface is very clay like, you know, with SDF. Uh, and you know, I'm just gouging. I'm not having to worry about topology or much technical um, kind of concerns uh, for the most part, right? I'm just like worried about the surface and forms right now. I'm just, you know, using the clay buildup to just add 
add some organic semblance to this thing, uh, some weight, you know, like right now I'm, I'm looking at this, this sort of droop. I'm like, oh, it'd be cool if there's like a belly there, I'm gonna smooth it out. And it's a very clay like mentality for me because in clay, I would, I would see that and just add a dab of clay, accent it, smooth it. And the main goal is to really communicate interaction of flesh, which is, uh, which is what I'm doing right now. And it's, it's so easy to do in modeler. That's so already, I mean, it looks like a clay, clay sculpture for this. Sorry, Anton. No, 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 it's okay. It's a bit hard with the delay, but I, I was just going to say that, you know, you were talking about the desktop and, and VR side, and I think it's, it's interesting because that's our, you know, traditionally desktop tools are very much like focused on precision and mouse and, um, pulling vertices, having really fine grain control. And obviously there's clay sculpting apps out there and like ZBrush and things, but I think in Modeler in particular, we're really focusing on um, delivering this feeling of clay. So it's it's not so much like desktop is a very different application and VR is different. It's more like they're both sharing this mentality of having this flow through clay. And just like in, you know, in real tools, you'll have for clay, obviously you have like dabs of clay and big slabs of clay, but you also have the the tools that give you the detailing, like the pointy things you hold with your hand, just like a pen. Um, that's kind of our mental model for desktop is that as soon as you want like a pen style tool, which gives you a lot of dexterity and precision with your fingertips, that's when you drop into desktop. It's not about like, you know, VR versus pen versus it's like just just like you would in real life you would take a physical tool that's more appropriate ergonomically so when you're working with big forms you're working with your hands like almost almost like with your hands in VR you still have the controllers but the, the grip and the feeling is much more kind of a loose big form grip versus when you switch to detailing you're, you've got this pen precision grip and I mean there's a reason people have tools like that in real life right like they don't sort of you don't finger paint, you know, usually yeah. you have like a paintbrush. And so it's the same thing. Um, so that's how we're trying to build the app. So rather than thinking about like desktop features or VR features, we more think of it like ergonomically, what are the tools, what's the best way to deliver a given tool? So for something like crease or build up, it's really nice to have a pen and have that tactile surface that you're drawing on. You can still use it in VR and sometimes it's useful, but like, the ergonomics favor the pen for, for that kind of yeah. service. Work. You um, can't argue sometimes with that, right? Like pen just you have tactility versus VR. It's like air sculpting as a, a friend of mine, I think it was uh, Matt Charlesworth from Valve. I got to give him props. He was the one who came up with air sculpting. Like <laughs> you're in VR, you're air sculpting. I'm like, yeah, you're right. It's like, yeah. it's essentially sculpting in foam. I mean, it has its, uh, um, it's advantages, obviously, but after a while, you know, you, you just want that tactility and that control. And, you know, it's it's uh, whatever is right for the occasion. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, it's funny because the community is always saying like, oh, I wish I could touch the clay when I'm in VR, which is so funny. Like if you think about overall, because at what point in time would you be able to touch virtual clay? And at what point do you like just cross over entirely into maybe just work with clay? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's resolution right there, you know. You yeah, exactly. Yeah. The <laughs> uh, we actually have a really cool question uh, in chat too, and so um, Bowen says that he's or she uh, is a student studying concept art, and they find VR is in general the fastest way to get ideas out. Modeler is something they're using already. Is Modeler targeted towards ideation? What's the end goal? And I know that um, Anton, you've also been giving a lot of thought to that in terms of like actually mm. creating the tool. Do you mind giving some insight into? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, we're we're definitely uh, aware that ideation is really fast in VR, and that's one of the kind of superpowers of having uh, 3D input. Um, so it's, it, yeah, it's a huge goal for the tool. Um, medium community, there was a lot of people doing, you know, 3D ideation, but also even 2D ideation where they would like do uh, like a 3D sketch essentially, and then do paint overs in Photoshop to, to get that extra level of detail. Um, so with Modeler, we want to capture all of that, but then also bring in some of these finer precision tools like Buildup um, and also Gizmo to, to do fine hard surface work. Um, so yeah, definitely we, we want to keep the, the ideation part strong, but we're also trying to see how much we can inch towards production as well by adding these precision tools and also adding, you know, like 
new inputs like pen and mouse and stuff because there's a lot of things that actually even mouse is really good for for like architectural kinds of things it's really nice to have the stability and precision for mouse and just kind of move shapes around or even just to pop out of vr if you're tired and just like work in that space for a while so we're trying to find all the different ways where we can enlarge that um use case but it's at its core it's very much about ideation um because you know, if you're going to really go into full on production and you're going to like CNC something, right? If, if it's a complicated piece, usually you have to construct it out of some like nerves or whatever to, to give it that fine machine level instruction. But like any, any production um, ideation in the real world happens with clay and then they either scan it in and then re redo it. So, so we're kind of really targeting that, that stage where you're trying to find the form, um, and for some applications, it, it could just be the actual asset you use. Like for games, if you take the asset and the mesh is good enough once you crunch it down or whatever, like that's great. Um, but also, I, we think it's really valuable just to speed up that ideation. So even if you do have to rework the model, um, retopology or something, it's still usually faster to and gets a better quality result if you can really leverage that. Um, that speed you get from looking through lots of ideas because really ultimately the concept is as good as as many iterations you can give it so like the more iteration cycles you can put on something you know the better it's going to come out so the speed is not just about like that the speed's not just to get the job done fast it's more that if something happens quickly one you're you become like more fearless right you're just like oh it's okay i'll just try something it's it's fast i'll just redo it or whatever yeah. uh and also it's more fun so you try it more and so hopefully through that process of just enjoying it and being fast with it um you explore more options and get a better concept so that's the idea Oh, very cool. Yeah, because I, I come from like a the whole vertice like background uh, working with Maya. And so like my um, interactions with Modeler have been like really, they feel more natural, right? Because it's just like mm. you're creating something as opposed to like fighting the hardware to actually be yeah. able to make something. Yeah. So it's like I'm less computer first, but I'm actually able to put like the art side first and then like worry yeah. more about like the, the actual computer stuff on the back end. Yeah, I mean, I think there's nothing wrong with the, ver the Vertex approach, really. It's just, it, it was originally designed for architecture and that kind of thing, like uh, CAD and these things. When you, you know, when your final goal is to define a line between A and B or exact curve between A and B, there's not much better you can do than using a mouse and typing the numbers in. Like, that's the ideal interface. So that's great. <laughs> We're not trying to, you know, we, we, we don't... Uh, do the whole hype thing where like VR will replace everything or like clay will replace like no it's not true right it's like if you really want to type numbers in type the numbers in like that's that's great <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that so it just when you want to do organic stuff or if you just want to bring stuff in quickly you, you that's not really the flow that, that you want and so I think there's just this huge legacy of 3D only doing that and so it sort of just becomes synonymous with 3d modeling well it's like oh 3d modeling is about working with polygon vertices it's like well it doesn't have to be <laughs> it's there's nothing fundamental about that being the way you do it on a computer um we're just really used to that being the the mindset so mm -hmm. yeah i think it, it's interesting to explore other options and, and like you said it lets you uh, focus more on the art because if you're operating all these things, you've got a lot in your head that you're trying to manage. It's much more of like a fabrication process than an ideation process at that point. That's why usually you'll do your sketches. You know, you'll maybe even sketch quite a, a detailed model, maybe even bring in exact things you're tracing. Because when you're working with these polygons, you're you're so focused on putting them in the right place. You don't have the mental capacity to to play with it. So. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to do, trying to free you up so that you can actually do some of that work more on the canvas rather than do more of it in the sketch. The more we can do in 3D, kind of the better. Um, Oh, yeah, that's excellent. And like really cool to know too, because at what point do people really get the opportunities you'll to see like the back end and like the, the thought process into what goes into these tools. And so um, speaking of which, we do have another question from Dragonborn VR, um, who would like to know how Modeler and Medium kind of compare, because I think that a lot of the previous um, users from Medium have moved on to Modeler. And mm -hmm. so um, yeah, Gio, uh, if you have any like feeling around like Tactility, what do you think in terms of differences? Um, 
I think Modeler definitely, I mean, it's a lot more elegant and the the UI is, is just beautiful and it just, the, the feel of the clay is much faster, but, you know, I mean, I, I have a soft spot for medium, honestly. Um, uh, and it took me a while to, to migrate entirely to Modeler because of a lot of the, it, there was just that feel, that medium feel that I personally, to be quite honest, for the longest time was lacking in Modeler. But now, um, now that we've honed in that medium feel, in my opinion, in Modeler, uh, I'm, I'm just like, yeah. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's hard to compare now, but I mean, I, I would, I'm just going to say that I, there's no need for me to go back to, to medium at this point. Uh, as sad as it is for me to say that, you know, it's a uh, medium was uh, such a big part of uh, my career. But it was pretty important for us to keep the, the best parts of it on the dev yeah. team because, you know, when, after we joined Adobe and everything, we had like more funding and power to, to do, frankly, all the things media was wanted to do for a long time, but just didn't have that much uh, opportunity. Now that we're like part of an actual tools company, we, we, we can actually put these things on the roadmap. And so we, we wanted to like really bring some, some of these long requested things in. And, uh, I think the biggest change is just the, um, the focus on assembly and dealing with many more layers. So one of the things that um, mm -hmm. Medium was very good for single object sculpting, it was very object centric, so to speak. Um, but there was a lot of people doing environments in Medium and, and things that required like quite a lot of layers or grouping of layers and management of these things. And so we basically, you know, at a high level modeler takes the Medium sculpting engine and, you know, we beef that up, but then we also bolted on um, a much more full featured assembly system with a different way to work with the scene graph, copy things, instance things. So part of the reason that modeler went through this like un uncomfortable valley of being kind of crappier than medium in terms of clay feel is because when we bolted on these things, a lot of things started cracking at the seams. And so we had to beef up the engine and fix this and that, and just, you know, lots of just bug fixing things. And so hopefully now we're at a place where the, the clay sculpting feels as good. And so you get the benefits of the object centric workflows in medium and all of the nice speedy workflows and tactile feel. Uh, but then also you can go in and like start to do these powerful um, assembly features like copying, linking, repeating, uh, and be able to handle much larger scenes as well. Yeah. So right now I'm just essentially, um, noodling the surface as I, I like to call it just uh and you, typically this would be like week two of, of working on this thing um you know week one would be entirely using the primary shape explorations to, to kind of uh you know get the design right and all that stuff so what you saw here was sort of like a fast forwarded version of of uh, my process uh between you know now and uh, two weeks from now, I guess mm -hmm. I'm just adding this, uh, you know, just like tendrils. Yeah, oh, it's so cool to see the the level of detail too. And uh, speaking of which, um, Chris Crane and some people from the stream are also wondering, like, are there any tools or future tools that can spray on texture, kind of like an alpha brush, or is anything like that planned in future? It's definitely something we're looking at on the technical side. Like maybe Gio, you can speak to how you use alphas in general. And um... yeah, uh, typically how I use alphas is um, I don't as 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 you're seeing right now with what I'm doing. This is how I would do detail because uh, I am a, a, such a stickler with form that you know if I if I spend a week or two weeks laying down my primary forms and designing it that way, I'm gonna sure as well, like design the the detail so that it, it flows accordingly to the form. So that means I'm going to be grafting it, you know, pore by pore or, uh, or wrinkle by wrinkle. And then on top of that, that's when I start adding the alpha to, to break it up, but in a way that's very subtle. So that's how I use alpha versus, um, you know, a, a lot of people use it as sort of like the main 
means for detail. I use it more as sort of like an accent, really. So. Yeah, we can definitely do it from a technical perspective. Um, there's some questions around how to manage the alphas and where to get them and stuff, but it's something we're looking at. But I think kind of to Gio's point, the way that we try to approach the tool design is we really want to put almost like put pressure on the fundamental tools to make sure that um, artists can use the, 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 the baseline tools to really deliver um, handcrafted things first. And then we work in uh, around tools to speed the workflow up because we've, what I found is that if you design tools that let you do that stuff in an automated fashion, people tend to use that as a crutch. Um, and then we don't get as much feedback about the fundamentals of the tool. So it's almost like, you know, <laughs> almost like as yeah. part of the beta process, we need to get feedback from everyone about how the, the fundamental things are working. And then we, we can add the, the, um, the fancier things on top after. I'm just adding like some gills or, you know, some design elements that I'm like, okay, well, I don't really want to noodle this until uh, we're out of time. So I think I'm going to say that this, this is the creature for this demo. And um, typically when I'm, when I'm sort of at a certain point with um, my modeler demo, I, uh, I would bring it to Stager for, for a form check. So this is a different model that I have preloaded, but um, can y'all see the screen, by the way, just to verify the Stager screen? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So uh, this was another model that I had done. Um, imported it in stager directly from modeler uh so you know i could present this as a sort of like a clay render um you know or just kind of move the, the lights around to kind of just verify if 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 indeed the the forms that i have uh placed are clean right so uh and but yeah that's my process and then from here you know there's also painter I, I would typically bring it in the painter to add some some color some materials uh, but uh, yeah just wanted to show that process uh, which is pretty much how I work uh, just much much longer than what you y'all have seen um, so yeah this is <laughs> this is our cuttlefish creature that uh, was done in I don't know, less than an hour uh, so as you can see primary forms utmost importance uh, starting in VR and then moving on to desktop for the surface details uh, using clay build up, or sorry, build up and um, pitch increase. It looks super cool. Like to think that you got there in maybe what, less than an hour? And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Hopefully, I get something in less than an hour, you know. Uh, but yeah, no, that's. I didn't doubt you for a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool though. Like even if you look into like the, the level of detail in the forms, I saw that you were, were you adding like veins at one point in time or like yeah, the actual forms yeah, that we see that? Some, yeah. Some veins over here. And I was going to add some gills. Like I, I really wanted this idea of, because when I'm designing a creature, I'm always thinking about how will this thing talk, right? Like if, if it was in a film, oh. like this, you know, the, the, the mandibles or the, the mouth would move this way and then as it would breathe, you know, maybe this, this sack here would kind of inflate and deflate. And then you have these sort of gills kind of flaring in and out. Uh, and then the, the, the eyes would blink like an orifice. It would kind of like suck the eyeball in. So there's, there's a lot of things now that I'm looking at this that I want to do. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I may actually take it further. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's cool. Like, yeah. yeah. One of the things with Modeler that, that we did is we made the copying of layers really cheap and really fast, and the rendering is quite a bit faster. So like when you do go into try and explore, like from here, commonly what Gio and Joshua and others have done is you just copy paste that model like five or six times and then mess with each one of them. And behind the scenes, we actually share the memory between the models so that you're not paying for like the bits that aren't different automatically without you having to worry about instancing or you just copy paste it and then you just mess with it so you don't have to think that you're like going to blow your memory budget so that's one of those things where the performance is really just helping the, the ideation uh it's not like a special feature or anything it's just the fact that the tool 
is able to do that uh, opens up these workflows. So that's part of our philosophy is that try to avoid, you know, a special UI, which is like, select this thing, you know, hmm. do the variations. Do you want instances? Like, forget all that. Just copy, copy, copy. <laughs> just let you mess with it. Just like bring that power of digital copying freedom, all that stuff kind of, but merge it with the, the tactility of real world clay. So it's like, we can't ever be as good as real clay, you know, tact tactility wise, but we can sort of bring in these digital things that real clay can't do, right? Because if you make a clay model, it's like, you can't just copy paste that whole thing and then start messing with like 10 copies of it. And so that's, that's the trade off, right? So we want to bring the good parts of digital and hopefully none of the bad parts of digital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we do have some questions too for the last little bit of stream. So we've got about 10 more minutes left. Um, okay. We have um, Chris asking, will there be any plans to have an intensity slider for layers? Um, it's something that's pretty useful in ZBrush. Also any plans for generators like a noise maker or something similar to nano mesh? Uh, intensity okay. layers, is that like for basically just uh, knocking down the strength mm -hmm. per layer for, for tools. Do you know what that is, Gio, the intensity slider? I believe so. <laughs> intensity slider. Um, sorry, I was kind of like half, yeah. I was like zoning it. Yeah, because there's an intensity yeah. slider on the tool, but um, I, I'm, is there an intensity slider on layers, Gio? Do you know what that does? Layers for more, uh, there is one for morph targets of that, that mm -hmm. or uh, yeah, like sort of more blend shapey kind mm -hmm. of a way of, working in, in ZBrush because I don't think the sub tools themselves have like a slider. So it's probably like, say, if you want to make this thing smile, you know, I would create a new layer mm. and sculpt that state. And then from that slider, I can kind of, you know, from zero right. to one, control it. Uh, yeah, I have so a feeling that's yeah, what it is. What it is. I mean, we definitely have plans to, to make the control of the brushes more careful. So you know, we have intensity right now, but there, we have some explorations trying to do kind of like make the, the tactility of the clay vary, give it more weight or more rough, uh, feeling um, wet versus dry or that kind of thing. But that's very experimental. So for now, it's just the strength slider, which is basically Z intensity style stuff. Um, and then for noise generators, uh, mm -hmm. we don't have any noise generators at the moment. It's kind of like similar to the alpha brush question and uh, we're focusing very much on just hand place stuff just to really make sure that stuff is really solid um we want it to be i mean <laughs> we don't know if we'll get there but our goal is to make the hand placed version so good that it feels as good as using you know real tools and so there's just a fundamental pleasantness in doing the detail Obviously, you're not going to do that necessarily. Like Geo did this process, or kind of like what I'm doing right now. I mean, yeah, like, there's, there's if you like that, yeah, like, yeah. So if you, you want it, but also, it. you know, if you're on a deadline and you need to like just sprinkle some scales on something, like that's cool too. We're not like <laughs> going to go super yeah, high brown. Yeah, really you got to go scale yeah. by scale. But we do want to focus on the the manual experience being as good as possible, and so that's kind of our focus at the moment. It's just ideally make that so good that it's pleasant and kind of almost Zen style to do so that people do enjoy. I think it does, you know, it, it comes across, I think in Geo's work where it feels much more handmade than if you were just to spray noise on it. But like I said, at the same time, it's like there's really great substance materials that have very intelligent noise that does different things in creases. And, and yeah, sometimes you just gotta spray something with noise because <laughs> gets huge or you don't have time or whatever and that's cool yeah go we want to add stuff like that sure. sure yeah geo's got the artist touch there where he just kind of got this knack for being able to put in noise very elegantly where it makes sense on the action model so i can also put my name secretly in there kind of like you know i'm gonna write your name in this guy's <laughs> head <laughs> you can't do that with a stamp i mean i guess you can geo yeah. <laughs> geo yeah. stamp yeah. That's yeah, uh, I mean, that's... That looks so cool. And we do have one last question that we'll take. Uh, another Chris. There are a lot of Chris's in this industry. Um, <laughs> will there be a send to painter, send to stager, easy menu button in future? Future, And I think that people really do like appreciate the, the ease in which you're able to take your sculpts and move them into other programs. Um, like Geo is showing uh, that it was 
what 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 did you name that uh, beast of yours? Did you ever name him? Oh, uh, I just yeah. You know what? Boy. It was a beast of burden. It's a <laughs> we should, we should <laughs> open it. Open it up to the chat. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Some kind of kaiju. Yeah, it will open up the the naming to the kaiju chat. You guys, <laughs> if you guys think of a cool name, toss it in the chat, and we'll we'll share it on our Instagram. Yeah. It's going to be shown on Monster Palooza if y'all or uh, anyone watching oh, is yeah. attending Monster Palooza. I'm going to continue to work on it there, that that little beast. And maybe this one too. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so the the scent to painter and scent to stage. Yeah, I think we'd like to really improve that functionality, especially within our own pipeline, like the painter and stager. But just in general, we're, we're working on export settings to make it easier to export to uh, other software and just like hopefully like you know again with that mentality of easing the burden you know because you're you got this software uses z up this software uses y up and it's like you know somehow cleaning all that stuff up and making it an easy way to say okay what software are you going to send it to let us try to work out the settings so that um it works more seamlessly for you to send it out there because right now it's definitely like an arcane black art to be like whoa you know blender supports this but not this and stager supports this and octane has this it's like you got to really know your software and know how to export and i think there's some good opportunities there to just simplify it um yeah we like to do that over time Super cool. Yeah, and this looks excellent. And thank you so much for everyone who's joined us today. We've got about three minutes yeah. left. Um, so if there's any parting words that we want to share, uh, <laughs> I think that actually, yeah, we have um, the the monthly prompt that we'd like to share um, with. Yeah. <laughs> with yeah, the rest of sure. <laughs> Oh, uh, the knock knock jokes. You join us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Um, yeah, anyway, so there, yeah, there, is, there is. I had a knock knock joke, but I'm like, I don't want to subject Anton to it. <laughs> I think we should tell the knock knock joke. It's pretty good. It's a good way to close. But I would before we right, tell the yeah. knock knock joke. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the actual prompt for the month. And so we realized oh, that it's nearing. That yeah, that prompt. That's okay. Through, through the end of the month, um, on a monthly basis, we would like to start something called MD Jam, hashtag MD Jam. Um, and that will be where our monthly prompts live, in which um, us as the MD team will give you a prompt and we'll be able to share our scalps. Um, we'll have some of our own internal artists kind of go into Modeler, make some cool stuff and give you guys the opportunities at home and or in your work or even in your spare time just to create something cool, share it under hashtag MD, MD Jam and um, let, give us the opportunity to look at it too. I think it'll just be a really cool way to see it. And so for this month, we would like to share that the MD Jam uh, prompt is monster, uh, very similar to the way that Geo has his um, squid Zoidberg monster. Uh, it's open to the floor for the rest of you. We'll be going to Monster Palooza uh, in early June. So if you guys are out in California, uh, drop by, say hello. Um, show and then monsters, yeah. show your monsters. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Woo. Yeah. The, the chat's bumping. Um, and without ado, uh, we have Gio. Uh, tell Anton your knock knock joke. <laughs> <laughs> knock knock, Anton. Uh, who is it? To apologize. To apologize who? I'd like to, to apologize, but that's all for my demo. Thank you. Well done, Gio. Gonna, Oh my. That's like puns. The bravery. The, the bravery strength. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, I'll never I'll never be invited again. again. This is Gio's first and last live stream. No. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Well done. It's been super fun. Well, it's great to chat. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you so much, Gio, for showing us your really cool monster and for whipping yeah. that up super quick. I think it's a testament to your skill and also um, to the modeler team for making a really great Please. tool. And thank you, Anton, for coming on and giving us some background in, in all of this. This is really incredible. Um, and uh, like, thank you for the community, too, for coming out. You guys are really awesome. We wouldn't be here without you. 
Um, we're looking really, we're really looking forward to what you're going to create in the future. And yeah, at any point in time you want to share, come hang out. We'll drop the Discord in the actual chat so you're able to do that. And you can at me at Boxer, um, and I will get back to you. And it'll it'll just be good. It'll be nothing but good times. Okay, Sorry. thanks everyone. Awesome. Thank you. Ciao.